How's it going, guys? It is 1.45 a.m., 3rd of March, Friday here in Japan. We have a past level question for GI for step one. Internal medicine for 2CK, nearly identical question. It shows up on one of the NBME forms for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 69-year-old man. He comes to physician. One month history of lightheadedness and tightness in his chest with exertion. The pain is worse when he's arguing with his wife. Hemoglobin, 9 grams per deciliter, normal range 13 to 17.5 in males and non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Test of the stool for cold blood is positive. Colonoscopy shows no abnormalities. ECG shows left axis deviation and a left bundle branch block. I decide to be an asshole and throw in some complicated distractors here, but these just mean left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, I don't want to go down a crazy tangent right now, but left axis deviation just simply means left ventricular hypertrophy. Right axis deviation means right ventricular hypertrophy. A left bundle branch block, left ventricular hypertrophy, right, right bundle branch block, right ventricular hypertrophy for you as familiar for all intents and purposes. Which the following is the most likely explanation for the patient's anemia. So let's just walk through the answers here. Should I say I had carcinoma, wrong fucking answer. Colonoscopy is negative, okay? It's not to say, can, can read between the lines and say, well, in some cases, could you have a negative colonoscopy? Sure. But uh, in this case, it's not what the US simile wants. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diverticulitis, wrong answer. So this is going to be left lower quadrant pain and fever in a patient over 60, okay? So I see students sometimes uh, choosing diverticulitis in young patients, it's wrong, okay? You need to know this is definitely an elderly diagnosis on USMLE. Left lower quadrant pain and a fever, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, diverticulosis, wrong answer. So this is gonna be asymptomatic or a patient will have bleeding per rectum, okay? Now, what you need to know is 50% of the U.S. population over the age of 60 has diverticula, non-inflamed, just asymptomatic incidental diverticula, and they can bleed, as I said, or be asymptomatic. You say, well, in this case, this guy's got bleeding, right? I mean, why couldn't it be diverticula in this scenario? I'll explain why as we move through the question, but just for starters, I want you to know that Diverticulosis is just asymptomatic or bleeding diverticula in the colon, whereas diverticulitis is going to be actual left lower quadrant pain and fever. It's when one of the diverticula become inflamed. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, Pete or syndrome, wrong answer. I'll be at very high yield. This is going to be the combination of perioral melanosis, fancy words, uh, which means hyperpigmentation around the lips slash on the lips. And this is going to be plus colonic polyps. They are homertomatous polyps. Okay, so what they'll do, they'll show you a picture, it can be kid or adult, you'll see hyperpigmentation on the lips, and then they'll ask you for what kind of polyps you see in the colon. They'll have like different types, hyperplastic, juvenile, tubular villus, etc. And the answer is just homertomatous. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, tortuous vasculature, nebulous, obscure answer choice, correct answer. Diagnosis here is angiodysplasia. Now, as I said, this is nearly identical to a question on the NBME exam. These first two lines here where they literally say, dude, he's in his late 60s. He gets lightheadedness, tightness of chest with exertion after worse with arguing his wife. You need to know that tortuosity of the, super vas of the superficial vasculature within the colon called angiodysplasia, friable vessels that are prone to bleeding, one of the most important differentials for uh, GI bleeding in elderly. Okay, so number one, diverticular bleed from diverticulosis, as we talked about. Number two, colorectal cancer, your big red flag. And number three, angiodysplasia. And you say, well, what's going on with the descriptor here? Okay, well, you need to know that for whatever fucking reason, uh, angiodysplasia can be seen in patients who have aortic stenosis. It's called Haiti syndrome, H-E-Y-D-E syndrome. Now, you don't need to know the eponymous disease name for U.S. Simile. It's fancy, but this is the vignette, as I said. Okay, so we have a patient who has aortic stenosis. He's got left ventricular hypertrophy as a result, and he's got GI bleeding. That's angiodysplasia, Haiti syndrome. Okay, so just be aware of that uh, for U.S. Simile. Lastly, Whipple disease, wrong fucking answer. This is just going to be Trophorima whipplei or, or whipelli, uh, weird sounding bacterium that for whatever reason will cause PA, PAS positive macrophages in the lamina propria of the GI tract. In 100% of Whipple disease questions, they're going to say that detail, okay? 
just PAS positive macrophages, lamina propria. It's a malabsorptive disorder due to the bacterium. Patients can get arthritis, can get renal and cardiac disease, and up to 50% of patients can get hyperpigmentation of the skin. Wrong fucking answer. You know, don't you make more content? If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.